Hello everyone, this is Natalie from NellyDesign.com. Today I am excited to show you a project done in collaboration with my friend Lindsay, who blogs at a butterfly house. Since Lindsay's projects often involve a miter saw and mine a cricket, we found the idea of doing a project together to be very fun. You will therefore find on her blog how to dry wood slices and assemble this beautiful wreath. The links can be found in the description of this video. As for this video, it will show you, of course, how to cut and apply the vinyl on the wreath. So here we are in Cricut Design Space. You'll see that it's a pretty simple process uh, how to cut the vinyl. So we're going to first go to Upload and you're going to upload image and you're going to find the image that you previously saved from Nelly Designs Library. So the image I have is um, the letters from for Ho Ho, Ho Noel, Wish, Mary and Falala. <laughs> so um, also, if you go to Lindsay, a butterfly house library, you also find other files. She has also words, but not the same words, except for a Ho Ho Ho. She has love, hope, faith and peace. And we have all different uh, words in all different types. This ones are with little dots. We have them plain, we have them without dots. So we, you'll see we have a lot of them. So you can select both if you want to check out which one you would like to use and insert image. So you see these ones are made with little dots. Those are the ones I use, except that the green is white vinyl. So let me just get rid of this one for now. I just wanted to show it to you but I don't really need it. And each time you upload one of my SVG files, it comes into a group. So in this group, there are other groups that are made and each group is a word. And so first thing you need to do is ungroup to only be left with those little groups. That helps because I don't want all these words. So I'm gonna close the eye of the words I don't want. I could also delete it if I want. But just to show you that that's something you can totally do if you don't want to, if you want to save them for later. So I'm left with this group that has three groups again, because each group is for a ho ho ho. So let's me, let me ungroup this. And the reason I made them in group, I wanted to make sure that you see that these one go together. Why is that? It's because when I'm going to cut it, I want to keep the space between the H and the O because my eye is <laughs> really difficult. And if I make a wreath and there's more space between the first H O and the second H O is not the same, I will definitely see it. <laughs> so that's why. Um, so I'm going to need to ungroup it, but you'll see they're going to stay in the right order anyway. So let's ungroup. And the first HO, I'm going to select them holding shift and I'm going to attach. So these Cricut Design Space is going to keep the space between this H and this O. Let's do the second one. So again, attach. And each time you attach, the thing goes on top. So I'm back up to the layer panel. So I need to scroll back down and get the second, the last HO with shift and click attach. And now these ones we don't really mind because we will like to save as much vinyl as we can. So we're going to leave them like that. And that's about it. The last thing you need to do is to select them, uh, figure out which height you need, and you can scale them using uh, this field right here and make sure to keep your little lock lock so that you know which height to put them. So you, And you can also do it like that. So now time to just make it. So we have a green mat that I cut in white. So you see they are very close to each other. So we like that. We like to save vinyl. And the next one is ho ho ho. And the space is kept between the H and the O. But the words are really close together. So we don't mind that because we're going to be cutting them to put them in three different wood slices. So that's perfect. We're also saving vinyl right here. So let's continue. It needs to connect. Next, I'm going to select vinyl. I have here premium vinyl. So I suggest you maybe you make a little test cut to make sure you don't waste any vinyl. But this is the default settings that I use and we're ready to cut it. Once it's cut, we can remove the vinyl from the mat and we're ready to weed. The best trick I find is to remove the vinyl that is outside the letters to save time. 
and then we can weed inside the letters. You see that the vinyl is very easy to remove. If you have more difficulty than this to remove the vinyl, it's because the cut is not deep enough, or your blade is worn, and you need to adjust the pressure. So, we weed all the little pieces inside the letters. And when it's done, what I like to do immediately is to use my scissors to separate the words. Then, I can cut a piece of transfer paper the exact same size as the vinyl. Now I will show you the very special trick that simplifies things so much when we have to layer multiple colors of vinyl. First, I lay a large piece of parchment paper on my work surface so that the vinyl or the transfer paper doesn't stick to my work surface. Then, I apply the transfer paper to the red letters, rubbing hard with the scraper. Since it's a very little piece of white vinyl, I use scotch tape to avoid it to lift because of static. Uh, when I try to apply the transfer paper, sometimes that's what happens. So the trick is to stick the red vinyl on top of a smaller piece of parchment paper and letting a very little piece of vinyl exceeding the parchment paper at the top. You'll then be able to see through the parchment paper and adjust it very precisely with the other layer because the parchment paper will prevent them from sticking together. And when you feel they are perfectly aligned, you can press on the exceeding piece of vinyl and remove the parchment paper. You'll see I'll be doing it again for the H. So I add scotch tape again to avoid static. I apply the red vinyl to the parchment paper, letting the top of the H exceed. Keeping the top of the vinyl lifted, I can precisely adjust the red vinyl on top of the white. And when I'm sure it's perfect, I apply hard on top of the edge and remove the parchment paper while pressing with the scraper from top to bottom. Okay, so this is the easy part of the project because I'm going to be sending these three to my friend Lindsay who's uh, making a wreath with these wood slices. Well, not these exactly, but some wood slices. So I have assembled them and put them back on their backing and I'm going to be sending them to her. But what I want to show you is that if you need to put this on a wood slice, it's very easy. It's really the easy part. So the only thing you need to do is make sure the surface is not too rough and clean of any dust. And the only thing you need to do is take off the backing, put it there and rub hard. <laughs> so if your wood slice is rougher, if it's a rough surface, you might want to put some polycrylic on it, some Minwax polycrylic. I'll link to it in the, the description of the video and on my blog if you need it. But uh, if you don't, if it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty uh, flat surface, you will be fine. Make sure it is permanent vinyl, but for the rest of it, everything should go pretty easy if I can just take this and make sure we remove it very slowly it should stick there pretty uh, pretty good and voila if you want to make sure it's stick there you just rub gently no not too hard just make sure it's really sticking there perfectly and you know you can even um, use this another time the transfer sheet so you can really put it back on the backing and use it another time for another project so i invite you to visit my friend's Lindsay's site a butterfly house where you'll find out how she cured the wood slices and how she assembled them into a beautiful wreath that you see right now she also has a very nice videos and i invite you to go give her a thumbs up and even maybe subscribe to her channel don't forget to also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and we'll see each other soon. Bye bye.